Good evening and welcome. Tonight we will be going over the history and geography of Azad Kashmir in Pakistan. And just a quick note, I always use American English pronunciations and in American English it's Pakistan. I know in pretty much every other form of English and in many other languages it's Pakistan. Like I know I kind of use it interchangeably a little bit, but it's officially Pakistan in my language. So that's what I refer to it most often. So I know it's okay. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Just relax. Azad Kashmir, which means free Kashmir, is located in the southern part of the Himalayan mountains. And therefore, it is incredibly mountainous. We'll go to the tablet, of course, like we always do in my series, to actually see what this place looks like. And it's so beautiful. It reminds me of more like, like, kind of like Tibetan Himalayas, other than like Mount Everest Himalayas. Like, sure, there's snow and giant peaks and huge valleys, but when it's green times here, I guess in the, the summer times, it's like violently green. Like it's so green and beautiful. It's almost like the Alps almost and how just absolutely lush these mountains are here. It's very, very beautiful. Lots of rivers creating spectacular valleys and lots of quaint little mountain lakes as well. There's one big lake, though, that is not natural. It is very man-made. It is the Mangala Dam. This was built in the 1960s, I believe. And it is one of the main electricity sources for Islamabad. You can see over here the capital of Pakistan and Rawalpindi as well. Very large city right by Islamabad. The capital of Azad Kashmir is Muzaffarabad, which um, is, I guess, is not how you pronounce it there. I, I think it's more like Muzaffarabad when you're there, but again, in American English, it would be Muzaffarabad. So that's how I'm gonna say it. And yes, lots of beautiful valleys. We'll explore them on Google Earth. They're so quaint and beautiful. But let's head into the history because it is very, very convoluted. You can see this border here with India is not like any other border in the world. Maybe the closest thing to it would be the borders between North and South Korea. This is the line of control. You can see right here, line of control. So we're going to talk about what's going on here and how it came to be that way. So, from like the very beginnings of human history here, um, there have been various small rulers in the area. Um, Alexander the Great came through while he was conquering Asia, just a side note. But um, the majority of the rulers here were known as Rajas. There are a couple differences. Um, Ashoka conquered this area, bringing Buddhism to the area. The Kushan, I guess, empire controlled this area at one point, but when there wasn't like a huge, massive empire from the south and what's now India controlling this area, it was various Rajas. And typically, the leaders of the area were either Buddhist or Muslim. It would kind of swap back and forth, kind of depending on the region and how much influence they had. The area would um, be conquered by um, an Afghan power. I didn't get their name, but it would have been part of Afghanistan at one point, even though Afghanistan as we know it today didn't exist until the 20th century. It was controlled by the Afghans until it was conquered 
in 1799 by the Sikh Empire. The Sikhs being a, a very different religion and belief structure from what had been going on here for many, 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 many years. They were based in Lahore, in what's now Pakistan. And the, the leader at the time would be known as the Maharaja. And of course, they were Sikh, right? Very different religious beliefs. And that would change in 1864 after the Anglo-Sikh War when England, the United Kingdom, was victorious and they conquered the area. The British East India Company appointed their own Maharaja. He was of the Dogra, I guess, clan. And they were Hindu. So even though the majority of people here were Muslim, there was a Hindu Maharaja controlling the area. And I shouldn't say it's just this area. It would have been this area. And what's now India, parts of China now, and Asad Kashmir now. So obviously the religious differences between the ruling, I guess, ruling class, because the Hindus in the area were now of higher status than the majority of the population who are Muslim, led to a lot of conflicts. It became violent by 1931 when protests turned bloody and um, you know it, be, it became a bit chaotic but there was a bit of order in it there were some Muslim political parties that formed or pro-Kashmir political parties things like that but it would all come to a head in 1947 and this is important because we're going to talk about the partition of India. So if you don't know your Indian history, this is like the most pivotal moment in Indian history. India gained its independence from Great Britain. But the biggest issue in India at the time was the religions of the region. There were parts of India that were majority Muslim. There were parts of India that were majority Hindu. The Muslims did not want to be ruled by the Hindus. The Hindus did not want to be ruled by the Muslims. And even though Mahatma Gandhi worked until his dying day to make both sides see each other as equals and treat each other as equals, all one group, you know, um, his vision was not to be, and the solution was to divide up the areas that were majority Muslim into their own country, and they called it Pakistan. There was East and West Pakistan. West Pakistan is now Bangladesh. It's gained its independence. But there was an issue here in Jammu and Kashmir. So any region that was controlled by its own individual Maharaja the new Indian government went to them and said, okay, here's the deal. Since it's partition time, you have to choose whether you're going to be part of India, part of Pakistan, or if you want to be completely independent. Now, every other Maharaja picked one side or another, but the ruler of Jammu and Kashmir said, we want to be independent. We don't want to join either side. We can go it alone. And they were independent from August to October of that year. They really tried. The main issue was, again, the majority of the people were Muslim. And they said, well, we want to join Pakistan. We want to join the Muslim-majority country. We don't want to be independent. We want to be part of them. And many, many movements, protests, uprisings, almost a full-on revolution occurred point where the Maharaja went to the Indian government, because again, he's Hindu, right? And he said, hey, can you help me with this? And India said, oh, ho, ho, now you come running to us. Uh, no, we're not going to help you. The only way we're going to help you is if you join India. So he said, fine, I'll join India. And of course, that made the Muslims of the region even more 
furious. Right. They did not want to join India at all. The Indian military rolls in. Um, Pakistan sends its military in, and it turns into an all-out war. The, uh, the leader of India at the time, Nehru, went to the UN to be like, can you guys help? And they said, oh, now you come to us for help. Uh, technically, no. You guys have to figure this out on your own. But they did help negotiate a ceasefire in 1949. And they established the line of control, the de facto border between Pakistan and India, which neither country fully recognizes. This is Jammu and Kashmir here in India. Um, Pakistan views this as part of their country, and Azad Kashmir that we're talking about tonight, uh, India views that as part of India. And to this day, it's very contentious. There have been some conflicts, some violence breaking out between both sides, and even some very brief wars. But nothing like it was in the 1940s. It's still a very hot-button issue. Mainly on this side, most of my research, I would find something interesting and find out that it happens here. Like, like I said, there's conflict with China. Lots of, there's lots of shenanigans that happened here. We'll talk about this someday. Not so much happened over here. But, um, there were a couple of things, even very recently, but the, uh, the main story that's happened that didn't have to do with the border conflict with India was on October 8th, 2005, when an earthquake struck near Muzaffarabad. It measured a 7.6 on the Richter scale and was a Mercalli 11, which the Mercalli scale only goes up to 12. That kind of tells you how severe this earthquake was. It killed around 86,000 people and, of course, displaced and injured many, many more. And the region pretty much had to rebuild itself up after that. The main news that when I was researching, that was pretty much all that was coming up, was the unrest that occurred just last month of me filming this, so it would have been in late May 2024 in Muzaffarabad when there were protests against the very high cost of living in the region. Oh, I left out something very important. <laughs> I'll talk about it in a minute. The very high cost of living. Uh, it turned quite violent as well, but from what I understand, the protesters actually got what they wanted, and uh, it's pretty much settled at this point now that it's June, but um, like 90% of the news articles I found were about that. I forgot the most important thing to mention, I'm glad I remembered it now. Azad Kashmir means free Kashmir, right? So this region is administered by Pakistan. But Pakistan said, listen, here's the thing, to kind of tone down the aggression from India, we're not going to fully control you. You're going to control yourselves and be a de facto independent part of Pakistan. So Azad Kashmir has its own government, its own judicial system, they make their own laws. Pakistan does all the big stuff like provide military aid you know, anything if Azad Kashmir needs assistance with, like, the, those protests when soldiers came in. Um, things like that. So Azad Kashmir is independent, technically. It is Schrodinger's Pakistan. It is and isn't part of Pakistan. But that is pretty much where we are today in Azad Kashmir. If surprisingly, considering that the line of control is literally right there, there's a lot of tourism here. They're really getting in people from the big cities here in Pakistan to see some beautiful, unspoiled nature, which is great because it's absolutely gorgeous and deserves to be explored by those who are curious. It's really, really interesting all the little tour spots that have sprung up here in the mountains for people that want to go hiking, biking, climbing, 
camping, all those wonderful outdoor nature things. Pretty cool, I think. But again, it's this region is not nearly as chaotic as this region, so I think that's why. So with that being said, why don't we head over to the tablet so we can take a look at some of this absolutely gorgeous mountainous beauty. So the thing about Google Earth that I don't really like is that if an area is like contentious, debated on, it doesn't highlight it very well. So it's like you can see I have it highlighted Azad, Jammu, and Kashmir, the AJK they call but you can't really, like, see the borders. And that's because, you know, India claims the borders, and so on and so forth. So they just don't highlight them. So I have to be very careful when we're wandering around, because a lot of times I wound up in the Khyber region, or I wound up in India. You know, we got to be careful. But let me zoom out so you can see exactly where we are in the world. So you can see the Himalayas here, the highest mountain range in the world. We are just on the very outskirts of it. So you can see the much more higher peaks are way out here. But it um, doesn't necessarily mean that the peaks out here aren't very high as well. Here, of course, you can see India. Afghanistan's over there. China's up there. We're wedged right between in Pakistan. So why don't we start off in Muzaffarabha? Actually, I guess I could show you this slideshow. It's not a bad slideshow. You can see some of the many roaring rivers here. Very beautiful. Little gorgeous little camping villas there. Beautiful city. I kind of hesitate to show you guys the main slideshows because typically... Well, isn't this a beautiful mosque here? Um, typically, it's in like the main city slideshows, but I'm not going to show you Muzaffar about the main slideshows. This is gorgeous. Absolutely incredible. Big old bridge there, that's in Musafarabad. Beautiful mosque. Almost looks Ottoman there. And look at this. Like it's giving Alps, right? It's so incredibly green and full of life. Roaring, roaring rivers. Beautiful trees. Almost looks like Siberia. So this region reminds me of so many places around the world. It's so beautiful. So, anyway, here's Muzaffarabad. There aren't really many very good slideshows to show you here, except for the red fort, which I need to find. The red fort is up here. The red fort was built back during the times of the Mughal Empire in India. And it was built to try to keep them out, which they pretty much did for the most part can see what's left of it here, and you can see why it's called the Red Fort. It's very red. And it's like, like, if you're a, a tourist and you're in Muzaffarabad, this is the first place you go to learn more about the city's history. The ruins are very haunting, aren't they? Isn't that lovely? Red Fort. And their exact, whoop, exact coordinates. A lovely river. Look at that tunnel. That's neat. The view there, the city, and there's the fort there. Look at that. Right at the confluence here of the rivers. Very, very neat, I think. Not to be confused, of course, with the Red Fort in Agra. That's entirely different. That was built by Shah Jahan of the Mughal Empire. Completely different from this Red so, let's wander around very, very carefully. Here's the big dam that was created. One of the issues of the recent protest was over, it was mainly over cost of living. I think I said that. See the dam here. But one of the cost of living issues was um, that electricity was too high. And they were saying, you know, we produce so much electricity. For Pakistan that we should have reduced bills. And it seems that they've got their way, so that's, you know, very good success story there. So I think if we explore 
down here, I might be able to show you some neat things that I found. Again, we have to make sure that we're not in India <laughs> or that we're not in a different region. See, I can see the border right there. Goodness, goodness. Um, let me see. I want to show you. But I have to find it first. I do have it tagged just in case I can't find it. But um, it's like the most beautiful thing I found in this region. I think I'm just going to type it in. <laughs> Here we go. The Neil Fari Lake. Oh, I was way off. Oh my goodness, I was way off. So it's this very quaint little mountain lake here. There's a big meadow nearby. Um, I think I'll show you that slideshow actually. It's really pretty. You can see the gorgeous mountains here. Do you see the lake? Look at that. There's a big festival that happens here. I tried to read more about it, but all of the sources were in Urdu or Hindi. And I couldn't translate it. So if anyone see look at this. Incredible. What are they what do they sell? Is it just a camp out? Like what what's going on here? Um someone let me know if you know. <laughs> Let's what goes on at this lake festival because it looks like a lot of fun look at the gorgeous landscape here yeah <laughs> playing around at this little lake it's so picturesque let's look at this one Neofari Lake look at that it's so so pretty again it reminds me more of like like the mountains in like Afghanistan or Tibet like it's just so vibrant right gorgeous 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 with beautiful mountain flowers and look at that look at how many people are here for this festival just crowded around this lake way up high in the mountains incredible and can look at even more zoomed out look at all the people there like ants when you're that high up it's so many very, very cool, I think. It seems like quite a drive, too, to go up these mountains to put in 3D so you can see. <laughs> like, how did that many people get up there? It's such a high peak. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. But I thought it was gorgeous. Um, we can also look at, I gotta be careful, I gotta be careful that I don't wind up in India. Goodness. I always have to, like, like, <laughs> adjust myself. I always look for a Muzaharabad, and it's like, then I can find what I need. I can see the border, you know. But yeah, look at all of this. There weren't that many slideshows here, but what I did find was very impressive. Look at all these beautiful valleys here. I think all the national parks are in the regions to the north and the Khyber region, so I gotta be careful. I can't, can't. It's so hard to see. Look at the spine there, that tells you where we are. So I just have to follow it very carefully. Hmm. Oh my goodness, look at this peak here. Do you think there's any pictures up there? Probably not. Oh, what's that? Yep. In the Neelam Valley. That's the big river going through Mazaharabad, by the way. I should have said it's the Neelam River. So this is the Neelam Valley. It's like buildings like this that reminds me of like Tibet and Nepal. I wonder how closely like those cultures have mixed. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> oh my gosh, even cuter. The little babies playing around. This little town, incredible. But let me see. Yeah, we're, we're almost in India there. I gotta be so careful. We'll look at that on another day. Not today, though. Let me go find. There we go. Then I thought that something else I wanted to show you is around here. But we'll just dive in and see what we find this. Hopefully this is something. Nope. It's a waterfall. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's a huge drop in there. Super loud, I bet. Oh my goodness, it's gorgeous. Oh, it just 
explosion of green. Like I said, it's like almost too green. It's like violently green. Like it's attacking your senses. It's so green. Look at this. Beautiful, beautiful forest here. This must be in the drier, hotter times. Everything's all dried up. most of the slideshows um, aren't are pictures like this so I think I'm gonna actually wrap this up sorry for my loud chair it's been extra loud today <laughs> in the past few days I think as I have to adjust it so anyway let's find one more slideshow to end it one more slideshow here's another water there's two more waterfalls let's see this one Jabbar waterfall make sure we're still in Azad Jammu and Kashmir yes gorgeous okay Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this style of content, please consider subscribing. This is an ongoing series on my channel. And next we're going to be heading to the Dominican Republic. The very first time we're heading to the DR on my series. I'm going to show you some really cool ruins and even more beautiful waterfalls and mountainous nature scenes. So be sure to subscribe so you won't miss out. I hope that you found this video to be relaxing and educational. And I hope that you have a good, 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 good night. Good night.